Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got an oldie but a goodie on the show. You might remember from the early episodes, we had Grill Your Ass Off as a sponsor. Uh, some of the finest seasonings in the land. He's back today. Uh, we have a, a rib off. Would you call it a rib off, Giorgio? Um, rib off. You shot it. Would you call it a rib off? Yeah, we're not going to say who the winner is yet. We're, gonna, we're actually going to show you that on YouTube. But we use all the uh, seasonings from Grill Your Ass Off. They were kind enough to come out to Jared Taylor's house and, uh, and do the show with uh, Jesse and Jared. Or brave uh, enough. Brave. <sighs> right? Yes. I mean, you know. Jared's house is a shit show. Words mean things, so let's choose them yeah, carefully. Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, welcome back to the show. Jason, how are you, buddy? I'm wonderful. I appreciate you having me yes, back on. Yes, dude. Mm -hmm. Your last name is Murph. Yep. It's not short for Murphy. No, it's no. two Fs. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. You know that's weird, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's one of a kind. It, it is one of a kind, and uh, we're glad to have you here. We're just going to fucking rap today, man. Um, we're gigantic fans of your seasoning, and uh, I will say this. The, you've, you've shrunk down the bottles a little bit, I feel. No, same size. Are they the same yeah, size? Yeah, they're the same size. Fucking A, dude. They I'm not going forever. away from girth. You're not? No. You're not going away from girth. I'm not backing off. We've had them forever at our house, and uh, Jessie uses every single fucking meal. She's one of the best cooks on the planet. She swears by grill your ass off. That's all she uses, and uh, uh, we love it. Today, we're just going to fucking do a, a normal show and just have you on the show, dude, if you're, if you're fine with it. Oh, I'm totally fine with it. Let's get I mean wet today. Let's get wet and hard. What are you drinking there, D'Anthony? Uh, White Claw. Ah, uh, are you? I get, I get this ranch water, man. We moved mm -hmm. to uh, Texas. You're a Texas guy. What's the deal with the fucking ranch water? Everybody drinks this shit. I honestly had never had it until we did the uh, Bernie Black Rifle Grand Opening. Really? And, yeah, and they had uh, George Strait's te uh, tequila out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went around the corner, and they were like, hey, you want some ranch water? I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I tried it. I was like, hey, this, this shit's good. Dude, I've been drinking it religiously. Um, I fucking reached out to them, too. This, this, uh, here it is right here. Uh, they're not a sponsor or anything, but I wish I wish we owned part of this company. Mm. This fucking shit's bomb, dude. Um, oh yeah, I had no idea. Is that a local one here? Yeah, it's the local one. Okay, uh, it's just called Ranch Water. I still haven't tried it. Really? Uh, Six point. Yeah, I just I'm not a big tequila fan. It's way better than a White Claw. Yes, or the and Trulies and stuff yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, because yeah. I can drink a case of White Claws and not get fucked up. These. Like seven or eight, and I'm like, whoa, there's I, my sea legs. I don't normally drink that much, but I had two of those the other day, and I was like, oh. Yeah, you yeah, don't, we you need don't drink to come down. No. What is it, 7.9? 6.9. 6.9? Uh, yeah. 69. Yeah. 69, dude. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Magic number. Who, are you married? No, single. Who, who's that fucking girl on Instagram? Which I, one? I saw a blonde girl. It was like a hot blonde girl on your Instagram. It's probably from a while ago. Was it really? Yeah. Are you sure? Positive. You guys thanks, break up? thanks for yeah. bringing up painful memories, by the way. We're getting the show started off right. Let's get real. They're not painful. Let's it's happy thoughts it. right let's now. Get no, real. let's dig into it. What's, what's your ex-girlfriend's name? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just, I want to know. <laughs> and her date of birth and social security. I want to yeah, know. No. Uh, Christina, I don't know if that's her name. I'm going to guess. Christina, I'm going to look in the camera when I say this. Jason Murph is a generous lover. You, you left a good thing. Um, I don't know what you did. Uh, maybe you wanted to travel more? and you found an older man on Instagram. I'm not sure what happened, but you left a good thing, and he's a real generous lover, and, and you've, got, you've got a kind smile. Has anybody ever told you that? No, no one has, so. Nobody's ever told Dan that either, so uh, you're good. <laughs> he doesn't have a smile. No, no, no neither But you, you left out a good part. Neither of you do, too. What's that? Uh, I'm really good at rubbing meat. You are, that mm -hmm. you are, and that's, that's one of your slogans on your shirt, by the way, rub yes. my meat. You've got yeah. really strong hands. Yeah. Women like strong hands. Yeah, they love strong Isn't there hands. some song about that? Or slow hand. Maybe it's slow, slow hand. hands. No, I, I want a man with a strong hand. Yeah, you do. Just fucking gripping me all the time. That's all yeah. you want, like dude. a little pincher. You don't want an Eric Clapton. You don't want a no. slow hand well, look, around he, you. He fucking isn't good with windows. He needs to keep those things closed. Wow, Dan. There's a child currently in the room, and uh, you're talking about a child. This death. happened like 40 years ago, and he doesn't even know what's going on. Tears in heaven. That's, that was the song written about the child, Dan. I wrote it. <laughs> I think it was written before I was born. I think it was, too. Wasn't that song about the Holocaust originally? I think so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, how long have you lived in Texas, Jason? Uh, pretty much my whole entire life, minus being in the Army. No shit. Yep. Where were you in the Army? Yeah. Uh, Fort Myer. Uh, the old guard dc oh you were the old guard fuck that yeah shit. Uh, i know fuck that what, what did you do there uh i was a escort 
uh, platoon. So we did all the funerals and ceremonies in the military district of Washington. Oof. Man, yeah. so you were in the, you weren't like in one of the satellite old guards. You were actually there. When, what years were you there? Uh, 2012 to 2015. Do you know Will Kanda? He would have been a major, I think, then. Don't believe so. He was, or a captain, maybe. He was uh, in charge of one of the, he was in charge of the, the mounted guys. Oh, uh, no, that's Quezon. So mm. that's a different battalion. Okay. I was in 1st Battalion, their 4th Battalion. <clears throat> um, but yeah, no, it, that, I got voluntold to join a volunteer-only unit. Uh, Shocker. I like that term a lot, voluntold. Yeah. Like when you were in basic? Yeah. Or AIT or whatever? Yeah, so uh, we were getting done with AIT, and they had us all in the quad, and mm. our drill sergeant was reading off everyone's name, and he got to me, and he said, Murph, the fuck? You picked the old guard? And I said, Drill Sergeant Rutherford, I don't know what the old guard is. Mm. So, no shit. Yeah, because uh, whenever you're going through uh, reception, mm -hmm. they tell you if you're six foot or taller, come in this room with us. If yeah. you're short, stay in this room. So I'm 5'9", so I yeah. stayed in the little guy usually, room. That's what I was thinking. They usually only grabbed, because I, I got grabbed for it in my battalion, but never for any of that bullshit. Uh, usually it's six foot or taller, but you're a good looking, you're a handsome man. So yeah. that's what it was. I tried everything to get out of it. I went to my first sergeant in basic training. He smoked the shit out of me for doing it. But I was like, dude, I do not want to go to the old guard. Yeah, that's never going to work. Help me. Yeah, I can't. I, I, you are a handsome man. I don't mm -hmm. believe it. Christina, what the fuck did you do, dude? Where did you go, mm. Christina? Um, it was a hot blonde. Who was it? Who did you date? The only. <laughs> Come on. If I have to go through are your you, fucking Instagram is it the one that on you air, met? I'll do it. Uh, probably. I yeah. Don't know, I don't know who else it would be. It was Monica. Monica. Yeah. Why did you do that, Monica? I will say uh, Jack Manville tagged her and some social media stuff one time whenever we were out with Crispy and the creeps. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> well, look, if you're connected in any way, shape, or form to Jack Manville's Instagram, yeah, yeah, you're going to get some fucking yeah. weird no. shit. Probably uh, from Jack, to be Probably honest, pictures yeah. of fingers and mayonnaise. Um, uh, yeah. You're yeah, going to get we, a lot of that. Stuff. I FaceTimed him on Saturday, and he was fingering his belly button. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's going to be here uh, uh, Saturday. It, yeah, he'll, he'll be there. He'll yeah. be raging with us. Yeah. Um, He's fucking hilarious. Here's the thing about Jack Manville that nobody knows. We, we, we've been drinking today, so we can do whatever the fuck we want. Um, it's Friday afternoon. We're getting wet. Mm -hmm. um, here's the beauty of Jack Mandeville. The, the fucked up videos on his Instagram, there is others that are so fucked up that he can't even publish that only we get. And um, they're the greatest goddamn things of all time. Yeah. When he dies, I'm going to put them in a collection. Yeah. And then we're going to do a, a funeral with a screening room and then just screen all of the videos that he couldn't publish. And uh, it'll be the greatest, most hilarious day of all time. No Please. one will be allowed with a camera. No one will be allowed to record any of it. And uh, he is the very best. As far as fucked up videos go. Oh, all day. Nobody does very it better. Best. Nobody, yes. It's a nice combination of uh, usually it's very deep and dark satire which is hard to pull off for us because you got to be smart to do it yes but then it's also like there's a there's an element of chaos involved that i can't really put my finger in but though every video he makes has those two elements and it's fucked up uh, and i can't dude. i can't I've, you don't see anybody else doing anything like he's doing no it, no 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 it's like uh these kind of mid-form videos 45 seconds long or so and it'll be like some historical event and all of a sudden it'll cut to the guy announcing that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is dead. Yes. We've lost Dale Earnhardt. It, and, uh, and those are my favorite, by yeah, the way. It's just like, that what clip the, is what my the favorite. What the fuck just happened? Yeah. What happened in my life? Because usually when I'm watching his story, I'm in bed at night high as fucking Christ, right? Yes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying, to, I'll have to rewatch it like four or five times. Like, wait, same. is this the same video I started out on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, takes yeah. you on a journey. It does. It's a full yeah. fucking Alice in Wonderland fairy tale with him. That's a good way. He is Alice. Yeah. Actually, he might be the fucking Cheshire Cat. I don't know. Uh, who knows? Monica! Why did you fuck it up, dude? I, I just don't understand. <laughs> He's a good looking dude. He's got his own company. He's successful. And you fucked it all up, Monica. You know, um, we actually hired Jack to do some uh, script writing for us. Oh, did you really? That's yeah, it. Those, he's, he's really good at that. Yeah, yeah, people that don't know, Jack's a genius whenever it comes to writing. Yeah. Yes, hey, he's, um, he's one of the best, dude, and he's a great actor. Yeah. So. In Range 15, he was one of my favorites. When I went to the edit to cut that movie, um, it, there were so many subtle things that he does that you're, I, I, you could just focus on him in the back, mm. even though he doesn't have dialogue or whatever. And that's the hardest, is to try to be interesting when you don't have dialogue. Jack is fucking great, dude. He hates that, though, because every time he comes in town and he's around any of my friends that know of that movie, they're always like, oh, yeah, you're the guy with the blow-up doll on your dick. Yeah, glued to your dick. And yeah. he absolutely hates that, because that's what everybody remembers him as. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's the best. We did. Um, we stayed after inside of a hardware store that we were filming in their grill department uh-huh. for a couple little commercials, B-roll and stuff like that. And then it would be every 10 minutes, Jack would get like really serious and quiet. And then he'd start skipping down the hallway and start singing a song. And then it'd go back to something like serious of mm. Dale yeah. Earnhardt dying. And yeah, yeah, yeah. just like, where does this come from? Yeah. Out of nowhere. He's great, dude. He uh, he videos himself sleeping too on uh, Facebook Live. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. So and because it, it cuts off after like four hours, yeah. And uh, he'll just put the phone down and I'll be like, "Hey guys, I'm going. To, I'm going to bed. Who wants to watch me sleep?" And that's it. One day somebody's gonna break in. Yeah. Oh, I should. Hopefully it's not Monica. We should. Monica. <laughs> we should stage that. I'll come in and pepper spray him. That'd be great. And his sleep. Yeah. Cause it like it, it, he's a bald guy, right? He's yeah, well, yeah. sometimes when he shaves, if you, sh- I don't know if you understand, he's got a bozo ring. I don't know if you understand pepper spray, but it's capsicum. It's, it's an oil that's inside of pepper seeds, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it's made out of. And if you, if you're freshly shaven, it's not great. It's, no, it's, it's no. like, it's like pouring lemon juice on an open wound. Yeah. I, right? I've, I've had it before. There's been i uh, I'm was, sure you have. You look like a guy that has on, been pepper sprayed a brother. number of times. Yeah. Not, not on my own volition. Uh, usually it's some form of, uh, raging events. Yeah. Dude. Like after an Ohio state, like oh, championship you mean, you mean or not something like a that. A situation that you personally caused. Correct. But yeah, I'll go I'll out there in the, in the whole chaos of it. Um, yeah. Why not? One time I can tell the story now. How, what's the, what's the statute of limitations on what? Uh, maybe vehicle violence or something. Seven years. Great. Yeah. All right. I'll tell the story. If it's if it's not uh, a murder or rape, it's seven years typically. So one of my buddies had a uh, like a shitty car, right? Yep. And it was in the streets, and uh, we were raging in his house. Ohio State had just, I think, beat Michigan, and we were going to the national championship or whatever it was, right? And uh, everybody's raging in the streets. So it's like '97. Very Portland. Um, I don't remember. I'm, I just turned 34 and like, you know, I'm still, my, my mind is so young that I, you know, I'll probably remember things when I'm older, but not now. Either way. That's not how that works, by the way. Um, yeah, it is. No. It's like elephants. You get older and then you remember more mm. shit. Um, Benjamin um, Button. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very reverse. Yeah, that, like that, that was a weird documentary too. Uh, so, so we were partying. Right. And um, everybody's in the streets, Portland style. Right, just kind of fucking shit up, lighting trash cans on fire just to do it. You know, it happens. That's a very Detroit thing, by the way. Yeah. If Detroit wins, and same with Philly. Yep. Win or lose in a big game, shit's, shit's getting burn. fucked up. Yeah, it's yeah. just the way it is. And so that was the that was the statement back then of like, hey, win or lose, shit's gonna burn. Um, well, who was the team that always pulled the goalpost down? Fuck. Uh, it used to be a big thing for a while, and then they started greasing them. Yeah. Now you can't fucking nah, do nah, that at all. You can't pull those no. things out at all. At all. But no. uh, anyways, uh, we we went out in the street, and my buddy's just like, "Fuck it, let's just turn over my car and light it on fire." His own car. His own car. So you know, eight of us lifted the fucking car up, dumped it in the middle of the street. And, and you're in uh, what year in college at this point? Uh, third year of college, somewhere in there, maybe. Okay. So this is uh, late, I'm a junior. I'm, yeah, I'm a junior. 90s, yeah. So, yeah. So um, his car was probably like a thousand dollar piece of shit car then. To get terrible car. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Um, and uh, we lit it on fire. Right, lit the whole fucking car on fire. Everybody danced around it. People jumped on top of it. It was a whole huge event, right? Cut to the next day. This car is burnt to shit in the middle of the street. And uh, the news comes and knocks on his door. And they were like, sir, you know, classic fucking news, yeah. right? Sir, um, there was a lot of violence in on campus last night. Was this your car or anybody that lives here that got overturned? And, and the, the fucking camera was on. So he was just like, yeah, it was my car. We couldn't say that he did it. And yeah. I lit it on fire. Was, we'd all get arrested, right? So he was like, yeah. I was like, uh, the, the violence got to be a little too much last night. He goes, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, 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 this is my car. And I, I, don't, I'm, I, don't, I don't make a lot of money. I'm in college. And I don't have anything to drive anymore or whatever. And uh, he's like, it's a shame. But, you know, I just I hope we can do better. And that was kind of the end of the interview, right? Afterwards, a car dealer was watching they fucking called him and presented him a new car a week later on air, gave him a brand new fucking car from like <laughs> Nissan or whatever it was. And they were like, sir, we heard your story. We just wanted to step in to help, you know? He got a brand new fucking car now, out of this incident. Just to update from earlier, uh, I don't know what the statute, statute limitations <laughs> is on, on fraud. <laughs> but technically, he didn't commit fraud because there's no contract in place anymore. <laughs> What he did was lie, which is fine. Yeah, I think you'd be all right. He I just lied fine. to people and like didn't correct them <laughs> when they assume things. Yeah. That's that's. I mean, look, there's not you can't you can lie to the news all you want. There's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah, yeah. legal precedent there. And the guy decided he wanted to give him a car. 
unless he signed a contract that said, yeah, I, my car got burned, so I'm getting this car, then he's, he's good. You don't need a fucking statute of limitations on that one. Yeah, and like, good. by the way, I want to preface this for the audience too. Like, this is the difference between then and now, right? You burn things out of like fun and like you didn't care about it. You didn't ask the government to fix shit or whatever it was. Like, my buddy didn't know somebody was going to give him a fucking car, but it was hilarious and a lot of good press for the car dealership. It's a win-win in that sitch in my book, right? That's like a 1990 GoFundMe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Basically, yeah. Um, so, you know, whenever that happened on college campuses and in Detroit and Philadelphia, whatever, like, you never burned down your police station or fucking targets or anything. It was just shit that you owned, like mattresses, trash cans, maybe your own car. Um, but you weren't damaging other people's shit, so it wasn't like you were going around fucking up everybody else's shit. It was your own, and you were doing it for fun, right? In today's fucking world, it's like, no, fuck everything. We're going to burn it and break it all down and blah, 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 blah. Last night, uh, we were watching the NBA game, Dan, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Barkley got on there. It's the first time ever <laughs> that I've heard a fucking NBA player uh, get on TV and say, hey, you know what, man? The Breonna Taylor thing, I think you guys have wrong. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not a, not a surprise to me that Barkley said it or that Shaq backed him up afterwards because Shaq is a reserve police officer in fucking uh, Miami, right? Mm -hmm. he's, he's been one of the very few people in the NBA that's never wavered on support for the blue, for lack of a better phrase. And Charles Barkley is the same. Right. Bar Barkley's just going to say what's true. He, yes. doesn't, he doesn't give a fuck. He's been antagonistic towards the media, despite now even being part of the media for the last, what, 15 years? Mm -hmm. He's still antagonistic towards the media for 40 years now in public. Yes. Like, I'm not your fucking role model. I'm going to do what the fuck I want, get fucked. Maybe you should raise your own kids and fucking leave me out of it. Yeah, that I'm not a role model. Yeah, yeah, and it's that, I mean, he's the one that fucking made that phrase a thing. He coined that phrase. So I'm not surprised by any of it. Any of it. Uh, I, I am kind of surprised that I haven't heard any blowback except for one article on CNN is like, fucking, these guys are taking heat. I mean, a couple of no, assholes on I, Twitter I, I, are lighting I, them up. Yeah, I, I saw a lot of blowback uh, last night after the game and then today where, um, for whatever reason, whenever there is a, uh, a black man who tells the truth or what, what his personal opinion is about a situation, yeah. if it does not match up with other black people, they immediately call him a coon. I don't know. Like, it's it's like it's short form for. Uh, I don't know uncle, what that uncle, means. It's short to be form for Uncle Tom now. Okay, basically. gotcha, gotcha. That's it. So I mean, essentially, that's not that's that's reductive, but that is for your for your information. Like, yes. For what you need to know about life, that's what it means. Got it. Because yeah, I, I didn't understand, but like, dude, there was like nine thousand coon comments on Twitter regarding Charles Barkley last night, and I was like, what the fuck, man. Um, He's spoken out against things that he thought were wrong. He spoke about it, like the George Floyd thing. Yeah. He came out on TV and said, hey, man, this was wrong. This other thing was wrong. He and he did numerous interviews but, about it. But he also talked about once the fentanyl shit came out, he goes, it looks like it was more complicated than it seems. These other officers probably don't need to fucking be involved in this case at all. But the guy at least still leaned on his neck for a very long time. Right. Like he's, anytime there's new information, Barkley will change his opinion. He's one of the very few people in all of media, particularly in sports media, that isn't completely biased one way or the other. He and Shaq, whenever it comes to these yeah. social issues, they're pretty, and it's weird that the two of them, I mean, maybe it's not weird though. I mean, they're, they're both Southerners. They're both like. I don't think it is. I mean, as that's new information comes out, you need to reassess well, because course, you don't know dude. everything. That, the, yeah, yeah that, that's true. But who, how many fucking people in the American zeitgeist do that shit now? Nobody does it. No one. No. It but, takes too long. But to take no. the time to do that after a massive game last night, I mean, it, was, it was the Lakers game for Christ's yeah. sake. And, uh, that was pretty bold, to be honest. Not only that, but because LeBron James came out and did a fucking three-minute, you know, piece on fucking Breonna Taylor yeah. right afterwards of like this is wrong and blah 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 and uh, and the other thing about it was you know who their guest was last night afterwards um, I know a lot of people don't stay up that late I do because I mm. never fucking sleep but uh, uh, it was Chuck D mm. from Public Enemy so I thought for sure Chuck D was gonna be like hey man you were fucking wrong or whatever he didn't say anything either so I, look the same people that own TNT by the way Turner Media is it's Warner Media and that's owned by AT&T right Warner Media owns fucking CNN everything all the Turner channels Rooster Teeth they, they own, own fucking Rooster, Rooster Teeth. Teeth they own Cinemax HBO fucking I mean they, they own a lot they own the Cartoon Network Adult Swim they own a lot of stuff but yeah. they also own fucking TNT who so basically CNN the same, the same parent company of CNN is Charles Barkley's boss. Right. So that is a bold move for him to go on and say something like that. Huge. But what exactly do you say? Because I don't think, 
I, in my personal opinion, I think the left is avoiding this dialogue right now about Breonna Taylor and what, what was happening in the months leading up to this shit. And I think they're avoiding that because there are hard questions in there that they're not going to be able to answer. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the, what, why was this guy, a month after her death, talking to his current girlfriend while, while Breonna Taylor, Taylor was his ex, although they were still fucking clearly, right? Yeah. Like that, yeah, I mean, yeah, according yeah. to all the stuff that's been put out now, they were still together. Right. At least in some way. <clears throat> why uh like she was actively involved in the drug trade it seems she was at least picking up money for this jamarcus glover guy uh-huh. on a regular basis and had like thousands of dollars of his so that's that doesn't necessarily mean you can barge into somebody's house and shoot them but it does explain why the, the cops were there looking for ho- her that night like yes it was her name on the warrant not the fucking kevin or whatever the fuck that dumb dick's name that shot the cop i don't remember his name but yeah it wasn't him but so cops have a warrant to be there they have her on audio and video surveillance dealing with at least cash from drug sales, right? They have the dude that's arrested for all the, had all kinds of shit in his possession using her address to send packages to fucking for his bondsman and all this other shit. Yeah, yeah. So like, okay, we'll get a warrant for this one too. They hit that house. A cop gets shot on the way in and they return fire. Uh, where, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, I don't understand it, and I, I know this. Um, we we always record, usually record these Monday shows on a Friday, uh, so we can get lit in the afternoon mm-hmm. and uh, give give some of our employees the weekend off occasionally. Well, Al- Ge- although you don't have this weekend off, Georgia. Georgia will never. Uh, we love I, you. Georgia has never taken a day off in his life. No, which is good. We don't either, really. To be honest with you, I write every fucking night. But um, Not me. Uh, with that, the the uh, uh, first debate is is coming up on Tuesday. And uh, we're going to do a live reaction show to it if you want to watch with us mm. on YouTube. This, I have a feeling, this Breonna Taylor thing specifically will be brought up during the debate. Probably. I mean, it's dangerous for both candidates because Trump has to be really careful how he talks about the situation. Right. But Biden's got to fucking answer some tough questions. So it, it well, depends. Biden, Biden relies on the African-American votes more than Trump does. So Sure, yeah. But you don't want to say something stupid if you're Trump. Like, there's a way to handle this. Correct. And yeah. he, he's, like, with uh, RBG passing, I don't, I don't think he's, like, an evil person at all. Like, I, I thought we saw a genuine reaction yeah. when, when he was going up to Air Force One or whatever. Like, hey, RBG dies. Like, oh, fuck. Like, he paused for a second, like, shit. Uh, and he was... Genuinely he, shocked. He wasn't thinking about what to say. He was thinking about the mo- like how big that moment was, you know, and probably somebody that he's had a lot of conversations with, frankly. Yeah. And uh, I know he was, Trump was good friends with Scalia and RBG was his best friend in the goddamn world. Right. So I'm sure their paths crossed a lot. It seemed like he was genuinely reacting there. And uh, that's good. So in moments like that, he can pull it together and not be a complete jackass because very frequently... Trump is a complete jackass, but it, he does it on purpose, by the way. Yes. He's not just a jackass in real life, probably. No. He does that on purpose because he likes an antagonistic fucking relationship in business and in politics. That's Correct. What he, that's what he likes. That's yep. where he's comfortable. It's where he has his success. Anyways, he's capable of pulling together, so I'm curious, really curious to see how he handles this part of the debate, frankly. Same. and Because you know, I have no idea how he's, what he's going to say. I don't either. I really don't. I don't either. And um, you know, it, it will be asked. And I bet you this case specifically will be asked. And you know, Biden has to say one thing and Trump has got to say another because they've each uh, picked sides now at this point, right? Yeah. Trump yeah. is law and order, police, uh, and everything else. Like I feel it should be. Uh, Biden has to go the other direction because he doesn't have a fucking choice. That's his, that's his voter base. So... Uh, we'll see what happens with that, but um, yeah, man, the, the fact that Charles Barkley and uh, and Shaq came out about it like uh, was nice to see. Where it was just like, oh shit, all right, well, people can actually have real opinions and not go along with the well, rest. Those two of the- guys are untouchable. Who the fuck is coming after Shaq or Charles Barkley? No one, honestly. No, and, and that's the best, that lineup they, they have there on uh, TNT. It's the best, it's very best in the biz. Of the best group of sports commentators of all time. Probably one A, one B with the the group with uh, the when on Fox when Brad Shaw and Howie Long and those guys first got started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. it's a little fucking tired. Hokey, They're yeah. all old yeah. and weird. Yeah. But it was the two of them. Uh, what's the the fucking black dude's name with the sweet ass mustache? He looks like fucking. Uh, he looks like the guy from Family Guy. Ah, uh, shit. His name? I know you're talking about. Can I, 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 I love him that guy. My, he's, so he's so fucking. He's his, been there for th- he's, thirty years. That voice, God, yeah. he could fucking just talk me to sleep every night. I, I love know. that guy. But they had that crew and the fucking current TNT crew with and, and look, Ernie Johnson's great too. 
He's, yeah. a, he's a great sports commentator yeah. Yeah, that yeah, very yeah. few people could ever say anything negative about. Unlike somebody like, you know, Joe Buck, yeah. who I want to stab in the fucking heart sometimes. Joe Buck naked. By the way, there was a, a funny interview that Barkley did where he said that uh, they were like, hey, if you, were, if you were dying, what's your dying wish? He was on somebody's uh, yeah. radio show Was the it other to day. be to not have the Supreme Court so, slot filled? No, uh, <laughs> it, it, even better. He said he wanted to beat... Skip Bayless to death. <laughs> Skip room. is the worst, dude. I, w- I was shocked. I was like, he goes, what? They were like, what? And he goes, yeah, man, if I was dying and I had to do like one thing and I knew I was mm. going to die, because he goes, otherwise, I don't want to go to jail. Um, right. But he goes, I wish Skip Bayless was in the same room as me and I could physically beat him to death. And he said it over and over and over. And I laughed for a thousand years on that one. Uh, since we're talking about RBG, I read an interesting article here about um, uh, Obama back in... Uh, 2013, mm-hmm. um, it was reported here in this article that he secretly had RBG over to the White House for a lunch and tried to get her to retire so he could place somebody in there who would last longer uh, and live longer. Um, and, and by the way, I don't fault Barack Obama for this. I mean, shit. Let's see, it was in July of 2013, so that was seven years ago. She was 80 at that point. Mm-hmm. No, I, I probably move. would have had the same fucking lunch, to be honest with you. Um, it's a smart move. Because he knew, apparently, that this, this could change the course of the court forever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it actually did, man. I mean, you know, we're supposed to get the, the nominee tomorrow on Saturday. Um, we don't know who it's going to be. I want to preface that we're, we're recording on Friday. Mm. We're supposed to get the nominee tomorrow. But, uh, you know, there are some people that are torn that if it, if it goes away from the... Uh, Lagoa, yeah, your girl. I think it's Barbara Lagoa. Uh, if it we'll isn't, see. though, people are raging about the other candidates. Amy. So, yeah, Coney. Coney. Coney's her middle name. Amy Barrett. Something. Amy Coney, Coney Barrett. Barrett yeah. Yes, uh, out of Colorado. Uh, people are bitching about, but uh, yeah, I, look, that was the the correct call. So, with this article, I a hundred percent Obama. Uh, I understand a hundred percent that that Obama would do this for yeah, sure. Sense. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised she didn't do it, though. I mean, I, it would be uh, incongruous to me had she not done that, which she clearly didn't, and then her last wish was not to get the seat filled. You know what I mean? Like, the, the situation was in her hands yeah. in, this entire time. And she knew. she Look, it wasn't just that she was 80. She had fucking cancer 80 times as yeah. well. Um, I don't. I honestly don't believe that she. That's her dying wish. I don't believe that at all. I don't think she would say something like that. I don't either. Frankly, no. And she certainly wouldn't fucking tell her family to tell other people that. No. Like she made one comment in her entire career that was about a president that was current, mm-hmm. and immediately apologized and said it was very unprofessional. There's no way that she would let her dying legacy be that again. Yeah. You know what I mean? This yeah. is, I don't believe that. I think they fucking made it up. Or if she did say it, she was delirious from all the drugs she was on. Yeah, I don't believe and it I, either. But like, how fucking big a piece of shit are you, by the way, to put words in the mouth of somebody that's supposed to be an impartial jurist and that's supposed to be her legacy? 2020, dude. Here we are. No one cares about uh, it. So here's, here's what he said. Hey, you're welcome, that. by the way, for us dragging you into a oh, fucking thank political you. discussion. Yeah, yeah no. why not, dude? It's, you're you're yeah, welcome. I'm, Grill your ass off, dude. They... they Great seasonings and uh, uh, wait, what's Ruth, the code for that? It's uh, promo code Drinking Bros. Is it twenty percent off? Fifteen. Fifteen percent off. Uh, promo code Drinking Bros. At GrillYourAssOff.com. Fun fact: um, It was RBG's dying wish that you get uh, uh, some of the seasonings here. So mm. she said that. She said that. Um, no, but here's what I found interesting about this Obama article. He says uh, the reason why I had her over in July of 2013, um, a year in advance. Um, he says. Uh, that in the 2014 midterm elections, he thought that the Democrats would lose control of the Senate. Mm. And uh, he was correct. Um, so, yeah, man. He was looking for a younger liberal judge who could hold on to the seat for decades. Um, the effort did not work, obviously. And, uh, yeah, man. Uh, fuck, that motherfucker could see into the future. I wonder, I, they've got to be having these conversations now. You would think so, right? Mm-hmm. They have to be. Like, hey, man, you're not going to win. We're going to lose all this shit. Um, because I think Trump is going to win. And I think the Republicans keep the Senate as well. I don't know about the House. I don't know uh, uh, that much about it now. Um, but I think, I, th- I know two seats at least. I, know, I think Laura Loomer's going to win out of Florida. And I think Alex Scarletos is going to win. 
Yeah. Right now it's uh, 232 to 198 in favor of the uh, Democrats. 232 to 198. Yeah, okay. that's the composition. It's called the composition. If you're trying to ever find that, Google it. Uh-huh. Congress composition, Senate composition. It'll pop up right there. All right. Just so you know, words mean things, so it's important to know what they are. It is. If, if the Republicans take the presidency, the House and the Senate, it is over with, and it'll allow Trump to do whatever the fuck he wants for the next four years, and that would be the, the craziest shit of all time. Uh, people would lose their minds yeah i mean i think yeah. it's but it would be super interesting to see what he does here's my prediction yes. Tr- trump wins his first half term the next two years he does the following things the first thing he does is get a comprehensive uh uh med- medical reform mm-hmm. healthcare reform passed and it'll be it'll not include the things that you think okay i agree first I think of pre-existing all, conditions will say well that's done forever now he just signed an executive order that that can't fucking be fucked with Oh, it's great. Did he Donald, really? Donald Trump did that, by the way, just yeah. in case anybody's wondering who did that shit. Yeah, so that, and then uh, he sent another EO about uh, pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical industry, but this is what will happen. Trump is one of those guys, and I don't, this, look, everybody knows that I think he's a jackass, but he's one of those guys who, at this point in his life, his legacy, his entire ego, which is very large, mm-hmm. is tied to making this country better. And frankly, despite the fact that he's a jackass, I trust a guy like that more than somebody with an agenda. You know what I mean? I, I agree. And I think, look, and this is why I voted for oh, him wait, personally. Here, here's, here's the two things that are going to happen. Or here's the, the healthcare thing. The first thing is uh, there will be a massive reduction in cost. And then there's going to be fucking major penalties for both insurance and uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies for gouging people. Like, they're going to get fucking butt-fucked big time. He doesn't play with that shit. So those two things will happen. And the next thing that will happen other than that is he's going to legalize weed. In the next two years. Uh, That would be amazing. Um, But this is the reason I voted for him was I think, this is me personally, Mm -hmm. I think it took a non-politician to get in there to actually try to execute things and get them done. And if you fail and look like a jackass in certain other areas, whatever, man. Um, But... uh, that's what I voted for, and that's why I'm going to vote for him again. Um, I don't know if you're... Uh, do, you, do you go out and vote? Of course. You do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Did you vote for Trump last time? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you voting for him again? Yep. Yeah, of course. You guys yeah. aren't voting for me? Huh? You're yeah. not voting for me? No, I'm not. Are you actually Definitely running? Not. No, but you can write me into something. You can, you can on the ballot. Find somewhere on the ballot to write me in. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll do it in one of the local things for There's some uh, city council or There's something. There's some... Yeah. Like, if you're in, if you're in uh, Matt Gates district by the way yes he wins well half the time he runs on a polls, but he usually wins 66 to 69 percent of the vote there's not enough drinking bros to affect that really <laughs> right, i right, think right, right. at least not in his area so if you want to write <laughs> me in and just uh screenshot or take a picture of it and send it to it's rep matt gates g-a-e-t-z on instagram just to fuck with him <laughs> that'd be really funny i feel like if you ran for something like where i live in salado there's only like 2300 people you'd be able to do pretty well probably yeah but then i'd have to do that job too and yeah. i'm not gonna do that come on yeah like i'll be in bed at 11 a.m people are like hey you missed your appointment like i didn't miss it actually yeah <laughs> and i don't miss you click <laughs> well, fuck out of here i'm not doing that Oh, man, I've got a politician that lives uh, nearby me, that's all I will say, who is big in this state. And uh, I asked him, I was like, privately, I was like, what's, what's, the, what's the real shit with this job here? And he was just like, man, you've got to love to do it because there is a lot of fucking bullshit behind yeah. it. And, uh, you know, uh, with, with Trump, it's the same way, man. It's like, I don't, at 73 years old, rich as fuck, why do that job that is brutal? That's a t- fucking 18 to 20 hour a day job. Every yeah. day for eight years? Yeah. Like at that age? Ego. I, I guess, but like shit, man. I, part of me is like, there's got to be some small part of you that, that, that wants to change the world. Otherwise, I don't know why you do it, man. I mean, there's jobs that I've disliked. That no, I'm were, telling you, if you follow the career of Augustus, right? Of uh, Caesar? Yes. Um, he... He was, uh, like, his ego was deeply tied to being the best leader and providing the best outcome for Rome as a country as possible. Right. right? He took it personally all the time. He was a, what I refer to as a benevolent dictator, right? Uh, 
it started out with the second triumvirate of him, Mark Antony, and, and fucking what, Lepidus? I don't remember his asshole's name. Uh, but eventually this became Augustus, and he led to the Pax Romana, the longest period of peace in Roman history, right? Right. For, for you know, years. But he was, like, into civil servants and, like, taking care of people, making sure they're taken care of, into making sure that the people were provided for, like, improving infrastructure all this shit that's what he did he wasn't out fucking he wasn't one of those guys like julius caesar his uncle just went out and fucking went to war to amass armies and money right right and clout that's what he did uh but it was that was his ideology too he thought he needed to get that rich and powerful so he could do the shit he wanted to do and that's what he was trying to do by the way uh those two guys really remind me of what trump does today because the senate and rome hated these motherfuckers they hated augustus and, but they were afraid of him and couldn't do anything, and they, they killed Julius, right? Yeah. So they were deeply afraid of these people because they didn't care. Like, people were like, we're, we're the Roman Senate. We're not going to do that. He's like, uh, we'll get fucked. Get the fuck out of the way. Well, they stabbed Julius Caesar, but by then, all those guys were dead. Right. Augustus took over, right? So I don't know, man. I think, uh, I think Trump shakes people up. I think he makes it... I, I don't think it's about his ego necessarily. I mean, it is, but it's not in a toxic way. He... He's one of those people that wants to make shit better. Mm-hmm. But to satisfy his own ego. But right, not in a negative way, but in a positive way. And but who cares? I, yeah. yeah, I'm the if, same. Like, if I the outcome care. is good, who gives yeah, a fuck? Yeah, I'm the yeah. same. You know what I mean? And the outcome is demonstrably good. Look, there's, he, the stuff he says that's antagonistic doesn't help him, I think. Like maybe the antagonistic attitude itself definitely helps. Right. But some of the stupid shit he says, like he says stuff off the cuff very frequently and then has to go back and explain what he meant. Yeah. I think he should get better at that, but he's probably not at 72 or 73 or whatever. Yeah. I but, mean, one of the big ones is the, uh, uh, I'm not going to accept the election thing. Like, yeah. Like why? Like he's clearly joking. And this, he's, well, no, there was a private conversation too, where he was like, if we find out on election night that there's all kind of weird tampering and shit going on, we're not immediately just going to concede. That's the point he's making. Right. But it's, and then he does like joke a lot. Like, why don't you say eight more years? That'll really rile him up or whatever the fuck he said. That, yeah. that one thing. He does do that shit. That part is funny. But this conversation that came out recently about this, you got to be careful about seeing that stuff because people take it seriously. People for whatever reason think that it's even possible that one 73 year old man can defeat the entire secret service in us military. I don't know what the fuck, kind of Thanos powers they think this guy has. Right, right, He's right. a fucking elderly old man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck is he going to do? Fucking sit there and scream and cry and shit his pants on the, I'm, I'm, this is the old office. I ain't leaving. Yeah. yeah. No. Make himself big so he can't get through the door. No, they'll fucking tase his ass. Yeah. The, uh, on the, January 21st or whatever day it is, I don't, it's probably the 22nd yeah, actually. Yeah. On January 22nd, 2021, he will become a private citizen if he doesn't win this election. Yes. Right? Yeah. He's not the president anymore. They no. can fuck his ass up. Yeah. Come on, man. Uh, but, but the Daily Beast did an article on it today, and they just said, behind the scenes, like Trump, it says Trump gets a kick uh, out of the election fears. Yeah. Like, that it's just a big joke to him, mm-hmm. and like, he keeps fucking with it over and over again, and it's like... That's pretty funny. I, I think so, too. I, like, I'm surprised the Daily Beast reported on this. I'm surprised the Daily Beast is still in business, but... Uh, um, apparently behind the scenes, like some, one of his, one of the people in his cabinet was just like, you understand, like he's just a troll, right? Mm-hmm. And all he does is like get a kick out of all of this shit. Um, and that's what, that's the way I took it, but everybody else seems to be taking it seriously. I don't take much of this shit seriously, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I'd like to see Bobby Schmurter out of prison. That's about it. You know, I'm a big, big Schmurter guy. I don't right? even know who that is. <laughs> yeah. Um, he had a, he, there it is. Giorgio's laughing behind the scenes. Um, he has a song. The name of it is one of my favorite songs, but I can't repeat the name of it because I'm a white man. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's hot and then the N-word uh, after that. But, so it's um, better than uh, Vin Diesel's new hit? Boy, <laughs> thank you for bringing no. that up. Don't play it. We're not going to play it because we're going to get flagged on yeah, YouTube. I'll, so I'll vomit in my mouth. We're already under a fucking shadow ban with these assholes on YouTube. So, yeah, I, I don't want to demonetize our... What, what is it? Uh, copyright strike. platform. Yeah. Oh, yeah, copyright strike. Copyright strike. Yeah. Vin Diesel put out a pop song today. If you have not heard it, um, it is the worst thing you will ever hear in your life. It's pretty bad. I've it's played horrible. this now for three different people. Um, two, two out of three thought it was a joke, including you, Giorgio. You thought it was a joke. It is, it is not a joke. This is what happens when actors can't do movies anymore mm-hmm. and they're stuck because of covid and all this shit like they end up making pop songs 
um, that are completely horrific. And uh, well, if you can afford the equipment at your house, you can do it by yourself. Yeah, to be honest. But he got who is the guy he got the famous DJ, Tygo. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, and even with that, he's not Kygo. good. Yeah, you got Tygo. It's it's awful. So he debuted this song on Kelly Clarkson, and um, it's the worst thing that you will ever hear. I'm trying to think back to when like something this bad came out. I think it was Kevin Federline. Uh, Britney Spears' former husband, when he put out uh, Papa Zhao, it was a rap song. Um, don't even remember that. that. Yeah. yeah, it was so awful that um, I don't know. Vin Diesel, I think, is 55 years old now, right? He's got to be up there. Um, I thought his interview at the beginning of the show was a joke. I did too. That the is, way that, that he acted really and carried Vin himself Diesel, was no. That is really him, and like that is that is his whole shit. If you go to his Instagram. It is a fucking acid dream. Like it, it is like if, if Dan drops acid after the show tonight, all you have to do is go to Vin Diesel's Instagram and you will laugh your ass off and then cry because you, there's no way you will think that it's real. You've entered another dimension. Go look at the picture he posted for Paul Walker's birthday mm, where yeah. it's Vin Diesel. It's smiling. like one of those eighties, uh, like family photos where it's a person in the foreground and the person in the background kind of faded out. But the person in the background is a gigantic Paul Walker yeah. head. And, I, and allegedly, it, I mean, not allegedly, it looks like he's just smiling down on Vin from heaven. And Vin Diesel's like smiling, but kind of crying. And like, I, it, it's a real photo. And all of this shit, like if you go to his Instagram or Facebook, because he has massive numbers across the board. Like he's one of the biggest oh, yeah. uh, figures on social media. There was one with him and an elephant. Um, a couple years ago that I posted on RPR and I was just like, was it at Joe exotics place? No, but he was riding an elephant in this painting and he was just like, Oh my God, isn't this artwork beautiful? It just got sent to me or whatever. And I was like, dude, it's you shirtless riding an elephant. Like, like fucking Putin. Um, <laughs> I don't know what his story is like with, I don't with know. all of this He's shit. He's got 66 but, uh, million followers. Yeah, that, yes. that photo of him and um, Paul He's, Walker looks like something off of a fan page you would mm, find. Yeah. He's 53 years old. Yeah. He's weird. 53 years old right now. This is all very weird. Um, so, yeah, go, go to his thing. And, uh, you know, um, if you want to feel like you're high or, or on acid without actually taking the drugs itself... Just go breeze through his Instagram and uh, enjoy yourself. And then play this song afterward. It's called Feel Like I Do. Um, it is a house song by Vin Diesel. Mm. And uh, it is the worst thing you will ever hear in your entire life. It's really unfortunate. This is what happens when celebrities get so He posts bored. it every year, though. What's up? He posts it every, the same picture. Yeah. Here it is from last year. Yes. He got 4 million likes. 4 million likes of, of Paul Walker's head yeah. looking down on him from mm. heaven. And this cheesy art, fo- I mean, it looks like it's something you would get at the mall. Yeah. Where you're like, hey, man, um, what's the worst you could do to me and my family? You know, my like, dead grandmother. Can you, can you airbrush my dead grandmother with a giant head on a skateboard? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is there any way you could do that? <laughs> get the fuck out of here. So they pushed the movie Fast and Furious 90, uh, got pushed till next mm. year. And like... You can't shoot anything because the only movies he pretty much does is just Fast and Furious movies. So, like, he's kind of fucked until that I comes mean, why out. would he do anything else? He owns part of the franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gets... That's, he's double dipping every time he makes one of those movies. On average, he gets anywhere from 30 to, to $55 million off of each movie mm-hmm. um, because he owns... He might not even take a salary as an actor anymore. I, I'm not sure maybe. that he does, yeah. yeah. I, maybe you can if, you're, if you own that big a chunk of the fucking franchise. It's, uh, it's the creepiest thing of all time. I don't... Yeah, no, he's got a part. He's, he's got a partner. Um, I don't know if he's married or whatever, but uh, yeah, and he's got fucking children. I, what, what's dude, his name? Is he partner? actually gay? No, because we were talking about that before the show, and like I remember like being in high school, and like that was the rumor going around. He's not. He was he's, gay. he's not gay. I, I, will I say hope this. he's not, and he's not, not because I don't want him to be, but because if he's like a guy that popular, just living his life like a normal human being without worrying about what other people care, speaks a lot to people. Like, stop giving a fuck what other people think. No one, no one, if you don't take criticism from anybody, you wouldn't take advice from. That's a really good way to live your fucking life. He's definitely not gay. So I I was at a party at his girlfriend's house and he Mm -hmm. was there. Like, this is before he blew up. Um, And he was just just pounding her? Uh, No, but he was like, hey, man, uh, you know, nobody better hit my fucking girlfriend. And it was just like that dude. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, all right, cool, man. Um, I get it. But, uh, 
Yeah, uh, he's that type of dude. So he's definitely not gay, but he has a, a huge gay fan base. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'll tell you, actors are gay. Like Travolta, fucking A, dude. I mean, um, Vin, Vin Diesel's an otter, bro. He's a hairless bear. He's, he's good to go in the gay community. Oh, he's, oh yeah. a, he, yeah. he's an icon in the yeah. gay community. So that, that's why he's not going to piss off that audience. But like, I'll tell you, like celebrity-wise, who's gay? Yeah, it's fucking like Travolta's. I mean, shit, his wife just passed away. He's been waiting for years for her to die. Like. Yeah. Um, he's probably busting out all the seasonings, getting ready to rub down. I, he's fucking. I heard he was banging the dude because he, he flies jets, right? Um, and uh, I heard there's this little fucking cabin boy, like a, uh, like a stew, a steward. You know, I don't know. It's I guess that's the male stew. I think they call them stews, right, Dan? Every body calls themselves stew in the in the industry. They call themselves that, but stew. like you're supposed to call them flight attendants, apparently. Yeah. Well, he fucks his flight attendant, who's a male. So. Is he a better pilot than Harrison Ford? Yes, he's actually a great pilot. Okay. Um, but Harrison Ford sh should not be flying ever again. Oh, God, he just got his license yeah. back again, by the way. Oh, really? Boy, Two good. days ago. I mean, yeah. he's like 6,000 years old, so that's great. They that's made scary. him take a course because um, he crossed over into the commercial runway. And, uh, <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. Dude. Oh, yeah, that him. happened whenever I was in flight school. Yeah, that's not dangerous. Yeah. That was one of the things we rolled up in uh, class, and they were like, this is what you do not do. Correct. Yeah. And so, so they made him take a class, and the, F the FAA just gave him his fucking license back. So he's... Gonna be in the friendly skies. I've said this for years. He's gonna die in a fucking plane crash, and I stand by that wholeheartedly. Because uh, all he does is get high all day. By the way, yeah, yeah, he's baked all the time. He smokes more weed than you, Dan. Like for real, maybe all day long. Probably not more than Giorgio. That's though. all he does. Um, no, the guy who owns Giorgio. There's two guys who have owned Giorgio: uh, Rodney Dangerfield and Dan Aykroyd. Um, Dan Aykroyd smokes weed all day long and will absolutely fuck your whole shit up. Um, well, Snoop's like that too. Cat Williams tells a really funny story. They were, oh they yeah, were, they were like uh, sh about to shoot some like round table comedy, like it's just a discussion, right? Like uh -huh. four dudes sitting around there. So they go back to the green room before the shooting, and uh, it's those four dudes and then a couple of fucking entourage guys. Yep. And uh, he's uh, Snoop is like, hey, you guys want to hit this blunt? And he's like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do it. So he lights it up, starts passing the blunt around. And, and Cat Williams recognizes that he's always got a blunt in his hand. And he looks around the room, and Snoop had pulled out blunts for everybody. And yeah. they were just passing yep. the blunts. But it was everybody in the room smoked their own blunt, then went on the show. Yeah. Like, a, like 20 minutes afterwards. I, Fuck that, by the way. I, I smoke a lot of weed <sighs> for a variety of reasons, yeah. uh, most of which are none of your fucking business. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. But that, no fucking way, dude. I would be like... I would just be walking around staring at the ground and shit. Uh, it's, it's the worst. Yeah, It no is way. the fucking worst. There was a, the only award show that is great and should live on forever Golden in Globes. Hollywood. No, is, uh, is, it was called the High Times Award. Oh, yeah, High yeah. Times yeah, Magazine. Yeah. 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 yeah, those are great, yeah. So I got fucking nominated in like 2009, I think. And when you go, you get it, if you win, you get a bong. Um, so the award is a bong, and you get to, it's actually usable, and you get to smoke it. So... I, I went and because everybody goes because they want to win this award and yeah. like have it on their thing and then smoke it at the house. Like that's, that's a pretty yeah. good, that's a pretty good flex. Yeah, it's it's awesome, right? Um, and so uh, when I went, you go back to the green room and it is uh, they're like, hey man, it's a real green room, and you're like, what, you, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, you go back there, there was just trash cans, like uh, those big barrel, like what do you call those, like like a fifty five gallon drum, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, filled with marijuana. <laughs> So that was the thing. And you could take as much as you want and they had baggies for you. So you would, there's bags lined out. You can take as much weed as you wanted to smoke as much as you wanted to. And like, I mean, it was, that's the highest I've ever been in my life. Uh, one, two, um, people were uh, rolling blunts and I'd never had one of those before. Holy shit, Dan. That's a, that's a level that I can't partake in where I'm I just mean, like, look, that's too much. Man. When I roll a blunt, it's usually either it's somewhere between the 16th and an eighth. A weed, like a quarterback, what you would call a quarterback, right? Because uh -huh. you're old as shit. Uh, so, yeah. I just turned 34. No, that was ago. 10 years ago, probably. That <laughs> uh, um, so, like, that goes in one blunt wrapper, right? That's a lot of weed for one human being to smoke at once. For real, it is. Yeah, man. Plus, you get a little bit of a fucking heady buzz from the tobacco as well. Mm -hmm. So, it's not, just, it's not just the weed. Like, there's a combination. Like, in, if you go to uh, a lot of the places in Europe when they roll you fucking joints, they roll a spliff, right? Which is like 25% tobacco. Yeah, like, yeah, But yeah. it's like, it's like uh, tobacco inside, not a wrapper. And it's a cone shape. 
they're pretty nice. They're, they're nice. Yeah. I, dude, highest I've ever been. And uh, that night, um, Pineapple Express had come out that year. So Seth Rogen and I think uh, and James Franco were both there. Oh, they really? both got on stage, except they were, like I said, everybody wanted the award. Like, you mean, it was you, a, you, nobody was going to beat them for anything. No. Because no. that's, that's probably, other than one of the Cheech and Chong movies, whichever one you happen to like, because they're kind of different, uh, that's definitely the best weed movie ever made. Yes. Like it's, and it's not what about half happened. baked. Yeah. Half baked is, is great. Uh, I, it's great, but it's, 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 it's okay to me. I'm not on the half baked train the way everybody else is. I, I agree with you. I think pineapple express is the best. Weed there's movie. just so many people in it, man. It's, it's wild as shit. There's, there's, uh, I love pineapple. Like express. Rosie Perez yeah. is so funny in that movie. So uh, I wasn't, by the way, I wasn't up against pineapple express in my category. Yeah, yeah. Um, I lost to sir Ben Kingsley. Um, he did a weed movie with uh, Drake and Josh. Uh, fuck, what's his name? He's really fucking funny, man. Um, either way, I lost to Sir Ben Wait, Drake Kingsley. and Josh. Remember that show, Drake and Josh? That was on like Nick, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So he grew um, up. He Josh grew up Peck. into this. Uh, yes, Josh Peck. He grew up into this weed movie. It was a great fucking film. Um, but we all knew Sir Ben Kingsley wasn't going to fly over from England. No. To accept this award, she should have just given it to me. Like I would have been amped about it. Instead, I fucking lost and whatever, man. I'm still bitter about it to this day. I would be too. Yeah, uh, as I didn't get the thing, so I was just like, "Well, I'll never get to smoke out of one of the these." The whackness. The whackness. That's what it is, and it's a great film, by the way. Um, I've never even heard of it. It was better than the movie that I starred in. For it was, the movie I got nominated for was a uh, Garden Party, but it's, uh, mm. it was better than that for sure. I love that film, and mm. it's great. And he Fam Famke Famke yeah, Jensen. Jensen. Yeah. How do you say her first name? Famke. Famke. Famke what is Jensen. That? Is that German? I don't know. Dutch, maybe? No. Mary Kate Olsen's in that shit. Method yeah. Man's in that. Yeah. It's a great, great, great film. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan this. of The Wackness. And uh, that ended up winning. So I was like, man, I'll never get to do this. Mm. And then, um, I mean, I, I, since I've had so many drinks, who gives a shit? Is High um, Time still around? I don't think so. I'm not sure. But uh, I went over to Anna Ferris's they house. They a website. And mm -hmm. she won for uh, uh, like House Bunny or something like that. And so yeah. it was on her shelf. And I was like, Holy shit. I was like, I, I wanted to win that. I never got to win or whatever. And Did she was you like, use it? Yeah. She was like, you want to smoke out of it? And I was like, fuck yeah. I'd love to smoke out of it. It works, the whole thing or whatever. And I was like, does everybody ask you this when they come over to your house? She goes, everyone. Everyone smokes out of this. Like, I make everybody smoke out of this. And I was like, god damn it, man. That's exactly <laughs> what I was fucking bitching about yeah. the whole time. Um, but yeah, that's the, it was the greatest thing of all time. And then I, I think the magazine died at some point. Like... If you don't know what I'm talking about, it was that magazine you see where it was just pictures of weed, like from all over the world. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, right? no, they had it in stores, and then on the yeah. uh, growing up, the north side of Houston, they actually had like a retail store. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like we'd yeah, always yeah. drive by and be like, "Oh man, one day." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it was rad, and then they did it in Malibu. So like when you went, like you had to spend the day out there. Like it was, I mean, you got too fucked up. Like you couldn't do anything at that point. Oh yeah. But uh, that was the best fucking award show of all goddamn time. Uh, you're just smoking weed all day. Yeah. Uh, Dan, you would have been, that would have been your, your spot for sure. I mean, look, I'm not one of those people that, like there's different types of smokers. I take small amounts over a long period of time, but constantly, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's to me, it's like a science. Like I know how much I need per fucking however long to stay in a position where my brain will shut the fuck up and I can do what I need to do. You right. Know what I mean, um, but there are those people that like smoke all day that smoke and then fucking take a fucking hour and a half to staring at something and then like, Oh cool. And then they do some stuff, they smoke again and it wears them out. I'm not like that. So I'm, I love places like that where it's a high environment and everybody's kind of upbeat. You just get a little sativa. Stay going all day. It's great. great yeah. Time. So open bar. You're there for about five or six hours. Yeah, I'd be drunk and high. The yes. Whole time, yeah. And then you go across. There was a bar uh, across the street on the other side of uh, the PCH um, that was on the sands, you know. And then everybody went there afterwards mm. and got trashed. And like, it was, fu it was fucking rad, man. It's fun times. Yeah, they don't do shit like that anymore, man. It's all fucking Vin Diesel making mm. goddamn pop songs. That was the AVN uh, white party. The Dude. after party that that's similar to that, but a lot more drugs. So how how is <laughs> that by the way? Because I never gone to the AVN thing. So I got invited to go to the award ceremony, uh -huh. uh, and I was quickly told by some friends in the industry, "Don't waste your time. Go to the white party afterwards." Um, I'd recommend it. Yeah, yeah. And then if you know the right people, you can go back to uh, the industry suites. Let me ask you: Did did any of them fuck each other? Like, do you get to fuck any of those girls? Uh, I didn't, I didn't partake in that. And but, your buddies? Uh, no, I didn't. 
uh, everybody there that I knew uh, was all pretty high up in the industry. Uh, they're not in it anymore, but right. they were there. Um, I mean, standing in line, we had one, one girl reach out, grab my arm. She said, hey, you tested? And I was just like <laughs> kind of dumbfounded. I was with a buddy of mine uh, who actually served in the Army, and he just looked at me. He was like, just say, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Dude, tested. It, it's, it's one of those things where we've had porn stars on the show, and uh, they never end up fucking anybody. Like, they're, you know? Yeah. I, and I'm always shocked by it. I'm like, man, you're not going to just go and, like, bone whoever? Like, you know? I figured at least Jared would have fucked one of them, but it never happened. I would say, like, the cocktail waitresses, because uh, where we were, we were in the uh, Hard Rock in uh-huh. our nightclub. And we had the VIP, uh, so we had table service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cocktail waitresses there were hotter than just about any porn star. Uh, well, of course. Because yeah. they're, they're not that great looking in real life. You know no. what's weird is every time they're on the show, they love Dan because Dan doesn't give them the time of fucking day. And as By the as way, as that's, that's, not a, that's not a fucking uh, strategy in my part. Right, I, right. I don't want to be But there. it is a good strategy. <laughs> Oh, is it really? If you're yeah. looking Literally. for a strategy, I guess. But I'm, yeah. I, for me, it's not a strategy. It's like I genuinely don't care if you even does not care. This interview. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then as soon as it's over, you'll walk away, and they'll always be like, "Dude, what's his fucking deal?" And I'm like, "I, I don't know." Yeah, but that could Damn. be anybody, and I would have just walked away. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, not to. I'm not trying to be rude because they're porn stars or nothing. I just don't care. Yeah, you didn't even smile whenever I walked in. No, why? Would we hadn't I do seen that? each other for like a year and a half. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been it a while. In San Antonio, yeah. no. Burbiz in fucking June of 2018. No, Vegas. Did, did we see each other in January? Wait, was it at the? He uh, came to the after party, didn't he? Yes, the Burbiz yes, yes, party. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh we, yeah, yeah. We were I did see you there. Yeah, we were rocks. We were fucked up. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We spent the previous two hours drinking with Tara. Before yes, that. Tara and she I, was way drunker than us. By and the way. I think Rudy Reyes was. That oh yeah, the, Rudy. Rudy yeah. Re- yeah, the show that never aired. <laughs> that that show is on lockdown somewhere in a government facility. <laughs> that that that's, uh, won't air. And so no. Rudy's passing. But so, <laughs> uh, uh, funny story though about that, that that porn star show. The last the the one we shot in Vegas with Jacqueline Taylor. Uh, I don't know if the audience knows this, but I'll tell you now. We shot it live at uh, Nine Fine, Fine Irishmen, Irishmen yeah. the, the, the bar yeah. at, in New York, New York, right? Mm-hmm. And we, we told the owner we had gotten permission, and they were like, oh, yeah, the executives at the, 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 the hotel love us. And they said we could shoot in the bar. Well, it was a packed restaurant mm. at that point. So there was, a, there was an older couple that was just having a nice, normal meal. We sit down and start recording, and she's, I, my first question was, how many dicks do you think you'll suck this weekend? And she goes, all of the dicks and like this couple turned around and they were real offended they brought the manager over and like we were almost kicked out of there halfway through the interview and i was just like it's fine i've got the credentials just call the fucking dude or whatever right because i just want to get through this interview afterwards i I ended up walking over to this table of old people and i bought their dinner like all their shit and i was like i'm really sorry and i was like i did not know she was a trashy porn star. I was just finding out for the first time today. So I'm just as shocked as you. So everything is on me, and I really apologize, you know, whatever. And uh, they end up ordering some desserts. And shit oh, of once, course. Obviously after that. But, uh, you know, they had a nice little excursion. So hopefully, um, you know, all of the dicks didn't throw off their anniversary dinner or whatever the fuck they were doing there. But uh, whatever. Dude, we've just been rapping and drinking all day. We got some sponsors, Stan, who pay for the shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghost bed dot com forward slash drinking bros um if you're a member of the military a first responder uh a teacher or work in the government in this life you get 30 percent off the rest of us dummies just get 25 percent off and uh you're getting two free pillows with a mattress at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros as always they get a 36 month pay-as-you-go program no interest there all of these deals are applicable with it um if you're in New York, I heard New York City might be shutting back down again. Get a fucking bed, dude. Um, we don't know what's going to happen, but you better sleep in comfort. Uh, I can tell you that much. It is worth it. Um, and then grill your ass off, dude. We'll do you next. Grill your ass off, dude. What do you, what do you got going on there? Uh, so <clears throat> that's all seven of our trademark seasonings yeah. uh, or staple seasonings. We actually just came out with a new one. Uh, just after April Fool's called Cannibal Spice. It's an all-purpose seasoning. Uh-huh. We're currently sold out of it, or else I would have brought you some. Sure. And when you say all-purpose, you mean like Lowry's or some shit? 
let's not talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> Lowry's shitty. It's, yeah. It's, it's no, like, it's actually a good all purpose. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Cause traditional all purpose is just like salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of sugar and they call it good. And you know, being yeah. from Texas, I wanted something. So it's actually a chili based all purpose. Yeah. yeah I, for real. I love your seasoning. We still use them to this day. My wife is a massive cook. She loves to cook all the time. We always use your fucking seasonings. Lowry's is shitty. In oh, my yeah. opinion, I don't, they're not a spot. I don't really care, but, um, and we just got done with a cookbook that should be out by the end of this year. Why, why is Lowry so shitty? Cheap ingredients. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Once you scale to that big, especially, you know, you see stuff like Tony's mm. inside of Walmart for $3. Like, yeah. what do you think you're actually getting inside there for $3? Uh, that's true. Eh, I never thought about it that way. Uh, either way, look, grill your ass off is the best in the biz as far as seasonings go. Use the promo code Drinking Bros at grillyourassoff.com for 15% off. Uh, next up, D'Anthony, who do we got? GetRoman.com? We might as well be talking about porn stars all day. GetRoman.com. Did you talk about Ghostbed yet? I did. We did the Ghostbed. I like Ghostbeds. How, how drunk are you right now? Uh, Getting there. Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roman, and uh, we're going to do uh, Felix Gray after that. By the way, they sent us a new glasses. Felix Gray did. Thank but, Christ. Are they at your house? Not yet. Okay. But they're on the way. All right. All right. Just checking. Uh, GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. Boner pills. Uh, get that fucking boner on, dude. Um, you don't need them, do you? No. No. But it's, I've never taken them. I've taken like a Vi- Viagra Maybe. just to like see and what would happen. It's It gives you a headache. Yeah. Viagra gives you a headache. Don't At do first Viagra. it's fun. Mm. Yeah. And then it, it's, it's a yeah. gnarly headache. It's a bad downer. Fuck Viagra. There's a reason why Roman's better, to be honest with you. It's a free online doctor visit, so you don't have to go in and tell your, your doctor that your penis doesn't work. Oh, my peener doesn't work. No, you just fill out a fucking question. But if you do go in, that's how you should say it for sure. Oh, my peener doesn't work. Or draw him a picture. Yeah, just real flaccid. It's like like, you draw a big dick, and then you put a circle around it with a line through it. Yeah. And then you do like this. Oh, it doesn't work. My peener. Uh, Go to GetRoman.com. If your peener doesn't work, or you're just doing it recreationally in a party, uh, best boner pills on the planet. They come in a discreet package. It'll be shipped to your house in 48 hours. And uh, again... Free doctor visit, so you don't have to do any of that other bullshit in there. Uh, maybe you could have gotten Monica back for that. <laughs> hey, uh, Monica! <laughs> why did you do this, Monica? You left a good man uh, who seasoned you, and you fucking treated him like shit. Um, Monica! You should have, yeah, on the last night, it, like if you thought Monica was going to leave, you should have just gotten some Roman, popped it up, and then just said, hey. That wasn't the problem. What was the problem with Monica? We've been drinking. The Murph. lack of it on the other end. On her end? Yeah. You know, girls that are that hot, like, that's a fucking thing. Where they just, just kind of lay there, starfish, and you're just like, oh, sweet, man. It's all right. I could be anywhere. Yeah. What you want to do is find yourself a nice four outside a Waffle House, and uh, that'll be a fucking ride you won't forget. You know what I'm saying? The belt's coming off on that, that end, you yeah. know? And it's, that's what- it's your own belt, and she's choking you with it. Um, that's what... That's what a, a real good time is. But, Everybody uh, loves a good strangle, but Monica's not. Yeah. But Monica's you don't, great for Instagram. You don't have to go four for that, though. You just got to you know, wait a while. Eh, a, a, a four is, I mean, if you're going to get crazy for the night. No. That's like, hey, you can punch out like one of her teeth. You just got to set the tone. Yeah. yeah. Hard slap on day one, right? Right. First time you fuck. Really good one. And then after that, it either goes or it doesn't, right? Ah. You don't have to... Yeah. It's, yeah, like a Russian police officer, stern but fair. Stern but fair. Yeah. It's a nice. It's a and stern consistent but fair as well. Consistent. I understand that. Real. Yeah, you got to be consistent yeah. with it. I understand yeah. that. The bruising doesn't show up as much. No, right. and you want it hard enough, you know, to know that you mean business, but yeah. not not yeah. uh, Chris Brown hard enough yeah. where, where they're going to call exactly. the police. And if you go to the body, you want to use something like a phone book. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So yes. I've got a stack of them next to my bed. Yes. Uh, still uses yeah. phone. I'm books. the only person in America that still that takes the phone book inside and leaves it in their house and doesn't just throw it out in the fucking street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who the fuck is still <laughs> using a goddamn phone book? And that's the thing: if you go to somebody's house and they're using a phone book, chances are they beat women with it. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure, they're beating somebody with it. <laughs> yeah, come on, uh, it's got to be a, a woman. My God. <laughs> Uh, last but not least, Felix Gray Glasses dot com. F E L I X g-r-a-y glasses.com forward slash drinking bros felix gray glasses forward slash drinking bros best in the biz everybody steals these fucking things i've got several more pairs on the way here right now i want them dude uh blue lights kids it blocks out the blue light Mm -hmm. we're staring at screens all goddamn day 
you need uh, you need these things to block out the blue lights, or else you're gonna you're gonna go blind. Um, you're gonna lose your sight. Watch that movie Ray. All right, if you want to be on the ground looking for a cricket, that's what's gonna happen to you if you go blind. Um, you're gonna be looking for that cricket because your hearing's gonna pick up, but your sight's gonna go away. I mean, you're yeah, unless you're planning on becoming Daredevil, I would not recommend becoming blind. Exactly. Exactly. Right? I mean, that's or living. Was Vin ahead. Diesel Daredevil? No, that was, uh, that was Ben, ben Affleck. 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 Oh, and, shit. And then some new guy on the fucking on Netflix. Yeah. Their series. Yeah, fuck. I don't him. remember his name. I don't either. I don't care. Affleck is the only guy I give a shit about. Yeah. I mean, heaters and cocaine for Affleck. Yeah. Uh, FelixGrayGlasses.com. A million frames. If you need a, a prescription in those things, throw an extra twenty in there, and you're good to go. Um, what, what what do they have? A shipping thing? You mean the deal? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, so you can. I think. With our deal, it's free shipping, but they have the 30 day 30 day money trial. Back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, money you, back guarantee. I, what I would Try recommend it. buy it and then wait two weeks. Like, use it every day when you're on the computer mm -hmm. or watching TV or on your phone at night before you go to bed. Use it if you're having headaches and stuff like that, especially. Yeah. Uh, use it for two weeks. You'll notice a difference within less than two weeks, I promise you. Yes. Because I did. And if you're watching a lot of porn on your phone, mm -hmm. uh, again, wear those glasses, dude. You're going to yeah. that brightness. Is gonna kill you, and it'll protect day. your eyes from any kind of whatever the fuck else might yeah. be happening in the room. Or if you're just like a basic white girl who just wants to look sweet on Instagram, like Monica. Uh, Do they make it to pair. where it's like just non-prescription as well? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Their base no. is non-prescription. Yeah. Their, you can, their base. Okay. Is, but if you need a prescription, they'll put it in there. Yeah. They're so. really. They're really good. I know a lot of people in our fucking community, especially, have constant headaches for a variety of reasons. Yeah. And now we're all on computers all the goddamn time. Best. It's like a computer or phone, like. Yeah. 13 or so hours a day for most people. Yeah, it kills me. Yeah. Fucks your eyes up. Best in the biz, dude. Speaking um, of best in the biz, Dots Pretzels is the best. By the way, I... are not a sponsor, but we love Dots Pretzels. I love Pretzels. them so much. Jesus they, Christ. Uh, they posted a picture that I liked the other day, and I just reposted it on my uh, Instagram story. I'm like, hey, go tell... If you heard about Dots from me, which is basically from Brittany, by the way, but if you heard about Dots from me, <laughs> uh, let everybody or let them know on this on their last post that you heard about it from me, and it's like fucking sixty. Is it really? Yeah. I want Dots to become a sponsor. I um, would love that. They're gonna send me some T-shirt. Me and her, by the way, are the only human beings on earth that have Dot that don't work for the company that have their apparel. Yeah, like yeah, we're the dude, only ones. I, I, it's great. I, it's funny, man. After we did that show, you're I a fan too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Thing. No, the pretzels like, are great. It's funny. What's you're, the seasoning on there? For Christ's sake, you're from Atlanta. You lived in California. I'm from South Carolina. Lived in California. He's from Texas. She's from Missouri. He's from Missouri. Yeah, it's like everybody, like people from all over the country now are huge fans of this stuff, and it's just now getting out of the Midwest. Big fan of yeah. uh, dots. It's really good. They don't pay us for that, by the way. I just I can't stop looking at them. You know what's funny? Um, because we're doing this live, and we're getting fucked up today. Um. Uh, because of that Vin Diesel thing, Eddie Murphy is now trending on Twitter, number five in the world, because he did a song. Remember Party All the Time? My girl likes oh, to yeah. party all the time. Yeah. Party. Same thing, dude. That's cocaine, by the way. He did it in the 80s when it made sense. Yes. He was on all the cocaine. He's yep. like, you have ideas on cocaine. I don't know if you've ever done it before, guys. <laughs> but you have these ideas that seem amazing at the time. Yep. And then, you know, afterwards, I would recommend going to rehab before the publication of any production you do on cocaine. Yeah. Go to, go to rehab, come back out, look at it, and be like, hmm. Still funny. Or no. No. Just no. a hard no on that because that should never be seen by the public. Patrick Swayze is also trending. I forgot he made a fucking song. Remember, uh, she's like the wind. Oh, no. In my foot. It was like fucking no. number one, dude. Uh, so was Eddie Murphy's. But this Vin Diesel thing was, oh, God. He's getting hammered right now on, on, uh, on Twitter for this fucking song, dude. Um, he how, should. What are you doing? the fuck are you doing uh ron paul by the way had a stroke live on air yeah, he's in the know, hospital yeah. right now so he just posted a picture of him um in the hospital mm. and uh so you know shit oh, do you think biden's gonna do that um and then we before uh, tuesday you mean? no yeah. oh, well there was a rumor that, that he was gonna COVID out of this you know i'd be really surprised if that happened to be honest i mean i would too it's too late now has anything else come up on the rogan on joe rogan yeah him interviewing him Oh, no. no he's, uh, yeah, he said he's not going to do it. Biden's no not going to do it. No fucking way Biden does that. Yeah, Trump said he would. Oh, yeah. Biden, Biden said he wasn't going to do it. Um, and there's breaking news here. Uh, wow, this is a weird one. Um, Conor McGregor says his next fight is going to be boxing Manny Pacquiao in the Middle East. Okay. I mean, somebody obviously Manny offered Manny Pacquiao them. will fucking light him up. Yeah, he's in trouble now. 
Like he's Manny Pacquiao is not a point boxer. He's trying to fuck people up. Right. Like fast. Yeah. F- fighting uh, knucklehead there that wants to like play the game. He's a great boxer, but he's not Oof. a puncher. You know what I mean? He doesn't have that knockout power anymore. He but will hit you Pacquiao, 80 times to the face and you'll never see it. Even when uh, I think the fight that Pacquiao lost to Mayweather, he, he had like a hundred more punches or something like that. Total, yeah. Yeah. Like throwing. He's just got the fastest hands in the world. Dude, that's a, why would you do that? Maybe Connor thinks he can't knock him out with those 16 ounce gloves on. It might, he might be right about that, by the way, because connor has been hit pretty hard. In the, in the face and the side of the head and shit yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. with the UFC gloves, which are, much, they're like six-ounce gloves or eight-ounce gloves. But even uh, Mayweather knocked him out, so it's like, dude, I, this, so this Sort is, of. It was a TKO, but I mean, yeah. It, it, with 16-ounce with gloves, man, it's, I don't, I don't know about, I don't know, Pacquiao is a, he's a tiny guy. Yeah, I, look. But I he, there's no he way can, Connor could win that fight. I'm out, just saying, no. I don't know if he would, I don't know if he would knock him out. I'm just saying, uh, there's no, there's literally no way Conor could win that fight. So this is according to Bleacher Report. Conor McGregor is in serious talks to fight Manny Pacquiao. The match would take place in late December or early January, uh, potentially in the Middle East. Um, why is everybody going there for fighting? UFC is over there too now. They're doing all that shit on Fight Island in the uh, Middle East. Because the governments are very cooperative if you have the right amount of money. Ah. That's why. Same thing with Panama City, by the way, but it's not safe down there. Yeah, look, Conor McGregor just confirmed it. He said on Twitter, he's like, hey, I'm, I'm boxing Manny Pacquiao in the Middle East. Um, and, then, and he posted uh, footage of him inside the ring training today, boxing. So, um, you know, I, look, that, that's, uh, that Mayweather fight was actually entertaining. I don't think this one will be because he's not going to, Manny Pacquiao is going to fucking light him up. This will be very quick. I mean, he's, it's going to be a fucking just fist. A flurry of fists all over his face for however many rounds he lasts. There's no way. Uh, three. This is three rounds. Tops. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. Con- Connor's a good fighter. Don't get me wrong, but there's. I, I just don't see him keeping up with the speed. What's Pacquiao is like a 140 guy, right? 143 or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but uh, McGregor's going on a tear here right now. All this is fucking live, so we'll just fucking read it. But. Um, uh, apparently, he just posted screenshots of his conversations with Dana White from back in February. Um, according to the screenshots, uh, yeah, man, he was he was asking for another fight, um, and he said, uh, "How about I how about I fight Diego Sanchez in Dublin?" Um, and uh, and he said, "No, I guess so." Hey, man, uh, I guess Diego Sanchez called him out. And uh, he posted all the screenshots with Dana White, and he said, "Hey man, let's fucking do this and mm-hmm. fight." And uh, uh, they nixed it. Dana White did. Well, Pacquiao is one forty six, mm-hmm. but I don't know what he walks around as. Connor is one seventy, walking around. But he used to fight it. But Connor used to fight at one forty five. He's, he's fought lower weight. I don't. I don't know. But for I don't know if this is like some kind of catch weight or what the rules are for the I don't know. or if what I don't even know what organization they're talking to. So we'll see, I guess. But if he stays at a larger weight, that's going to help with power, I guess, and, and stamina. But I guess, man. I mean, that's Manny Pacquiao. Fight. You do. I, I feel like Manny Pacquiao could run a marathon right now with no training. Same. You know what I mean? Same I here. Really, Absolutely. I really, like I believe because I've seen him fight so many times. He doesn't seem to get tired and ever. So I don't know what the fuck is going on with him. But Connor is not used to. That was the that was the critique before the the Mayweather fight, right? Like he's never. Like, yeah, they fight yeah. three or five two-minute rounds, but fucking 16 two-minute rounds is a big goddamn difference. Yeah. That's oh, a lot yeah. of time, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, How old is McGregor? Uh, he's 31, I think. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty young. I mean, he's still in his fucking prime. 30, like, yeah. He's 32. Yeah. Pacquiao's 41. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. Good luck with all of that, man. That's a terrible matchup. I don't get that fight. I mean, I... I, I don't get, understand why Dana's not having him fight in the UFC. Like... It just I mean, doesn't make any sense. No, it really doesn't. Uh, He's and, still the biggest star, in my opinion. I think with the name, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm, I was trying to think Street of, Jesus had the opportunity. If he would have won that last fight... Yeah, and John, I mean, John Jones could be that guy, but he's not great with the press, and he keeps boring. getting in trouble. Yeah, dude. I, I don't like watching John Jones fight. No. I don't. Uh, I don't fucking enjoy it. I'm sorry. Um, I don't. Uh, we're at the point in the show now where we should get to the drinking bro of the week because we've been drinking and you are our bro. 
Uh, let's give it to you, Jason. Who would you like to give it to? Who's somebody who's helped you out along the way? Um, pull it out to someone that most people know, John Burke. Okay. So uh, he was one of the first kind of big name veterans as I was starting Grill Your Ass Off. Um, was doing everything out of my garage still, had no idea about anything. And he actually reached out to me on Instagram was like, hey, I had a buddy tell me uh, about your seasonings. Like, um, I'm going to get some and if I like it, I'll shout you out. I was like, well, here, give me your address. Let me send you some. This is freaking awesome. Yeah. And he told me, fuck you, and then paid full price for it, mm-hmm. and then tried it, shouted it out, and we've been friends ever since. That's fucking awesome, dude. We yeah. do the same. We pay for all our own shit. I don't, I don't like asking people for free shit. It's like, hey, man, you have a business same as everybody else. It's like, same right. as us. We'll mm-hmm. pay for our shit. Um, just tell me what it is. We do use our own promo codes on shit. But, oh, yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. But not on dots. No. I told them yesterday, they, I, they DM me yesterday, like, hey, do you want us to send you more pretzels? No, send me some shirts and shit that I could wear. I'll buy the pretzels. Yeah. Fuck, man. That's your I, business. I'm surprised they're not a fucking sponsor, to be honest with you. I, to be honest, I mean, they would blow up. I know that the reason, we're the reason they exist on the East Coast, in my opinion. <laughs> For real. I think so. I'd never heard anyone even talk about these before she told me about it. And then I start talking about it on the show, and all of a sudden, they start popping up in grocery stores. Well, I didn't, here's the thing, because I didn't believe you. And then you gave me a bag, yeah, and then the, I fucking the ate them. And then we went on air the next day, and I was like, holy shit, there's goddamn Dots pretzels. I yeah. ate the whole fucking bag. But still, you can buy them on Amazon. I'm not going to fucking... If you can buy something on Amazon, I will never let you ship it to me for free. Ever. Right, right. I don't give a fuck what it is. Unless it's like a car or some shit like that, then I'll take it. Yeah. And I'll resell it. <laughs> I'm not going to keep... I, I've got a car. Can you re... Is it like rude to re-gift a car if somebody buys you a car? No. Yeah. No, I always wondered at like the the Major League Baseball All Star games because you get that mm-hmm. you know you get a truck or something. And yeah. I'm like, man, there's rich ass. They have already got fucking trucks. Yeah, like, like what I'm do sure they do they with just that? Give it away to their mom yeah. or whatever. Um, yeah, no, I think it's regifting a car is fine. The only problem is they're gonna have to pay taxes on it. Like Oprah. Yeah, <laughs> Oprah fucked all those people over. They just gave like uh, a fucking what was it twenty five thousand dollar car? Like, all yeah. right, well that's like. You got to pay tax on you gotta that. You got to pay it's tax on tax. that, brother. Like, you're in California. What's the sales tax in California? Uh, like 13.9. Yeah, 13.9%. So you paid 13.9% of $25,000. Yep. That's what you owed the government after that gift. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Not I, to mention registering the goddamn thing in California, which is going to cost you a couple more hundred bucks. There was a girl that I dated for a long time in LA, and uh, her dream was to go on prices, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, when, when she was getting ready to go on, I was like, look, they love people from the Midwest wearing Ohio State sweatshirt mm-hmm. or whatever. And uh, uh, sure enough, she gets on and um, she won. So she, she won a dinette set um, at the, in the bidding stages and mm-hmm. then won something else after that, right? The total, uh, and she lost on the, the wheel. Um, so she didn't get to go to the final round, right? She, mm-hmm. she didn't get the dollar or whatever the fuck it was. Um, the total on her shit was $6,800 that she had won on the show, right? Right. As soon as you get off, they take you backstage and they're like, okay, great. Do you want the actual items or do you want the cash? She was like, what? I don't get the actual items? And they're like, no, no, no. You can have the items. The problem is you've got to pay for the taxes on them. So at $6,800, like she had to pay, you know, whatever the fuck it was, like 1500 bucks or something on the, on the things. She was like, oh, well, then no, I'll take the cash. So yeah, of course. We never got the dinette set. Oh, that's way. too bad. I know. I wanted the dinette set. Because then every time, it's a conversation piece. Every time somebody comes over and you're like, oh, what are we having dinner at? Well, we're having dinner at the fucking Price is Right table. Yeah, you, doing. Can, you can just lie about that, though. No. Just go out and buy a unique table and tell people, don't they? I yeah. think you know. Yeah, I think as soon as you say dinette set, you have that picture in your mind of what that looks like mm. when the Price is Right. That's a lie. I don't want to get caught in, Dan. I'm sorry. I have one for the Price is Right. Um, I can't give out too much details. Uh-huh. But we had a soldier that did some bad stuff while I was still in, kicked him out of the army. He went back home to New York, got on the prices right, and won a Porsche SUV. Like two, uh, I think like two weeks or two months after we kicked him out. The Porsche? Yeah. Oh, that that Cayenne. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. No shit. Yeah. Wow. That changed his life. I wonder what he's doing right now. I don't know. You know the taxes on that thing? Is that thing? I think retail. I remember when that came out. I think it was about sixty five. Um, oh yeah, he probably got. <sighs> There's no mm, way that's he about paid the taxes on that thing. 8,500, 9,000 in tax yeah, in California. Dude, at least. There's no yeah. way he took yeah. that thing, right? He probably, he probably just took the cash instead. Probably. Um, I mean, he was out of a job, so. Yeah, I, and by the way, the other thing about the prices, right, is they don't, they don't pay you or you don't get your items for six to nine months afterwards. Because that's like when rooms the to go. shows actually mm. here, correct, yeah. yeah. I just so. spent some time there. Oh, did you really? Yeah. 
Rooms to go is fi- I, there's something with furniture stores now. Like well, everybody's getting fucked over by furniture stores. No, there, there's it's no all furniture in stock. Logistics from the pandemic and everything mm-hmm. going on. Yeah, I mean it's the same thing with our products. Is you have second and third order uh, effects, order effects yeah. on supply chains. Yep. Because we had this huge rush, and everybody has stock of everything. So like with our plastic bottles, for instance, we sell out, place another giant order. Yeah. We're good to go. And then we sell out again. And typically our turnaround time says two, three weeks. And then now we're looking at nine weeks. No shit. And everybody screwed at that point. Oh, so you're, fuck. So that's why, I mean, you still go into Target or other places like that that sell home goods and things like that. They're yeah. still empty shelves. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's affecting everybody. Wow. How, how, how's your shit? Is it in stock? Uh, yeah. No, we just got everything back in stock finally. Great. We just did large blends and uh, we got it in all of our distribution warehouses. So we're stocked up and ready to go. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, shit. Go to grillyourassoff.com, promo code Drinking Bros, 15% off. We appreciate you being on the mm-hmm. show. We've always been gigantic fans. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for doing the fucking rib off, too. No problem. For Anytime. Real. Uh, for Danthony, Danthony Holloway, uh, Jason Murph, I'm Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.